In 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, we see a reference to the sanctuary and its fulfillment by Jesus. You were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for our sins will be something we continue to learn about throughout eternity. It's hard to wrap my head around the plan of salvation that was put together in heaven, that God saw the sin problem and knew we would sin, but decided to have His Son punished for our sins. It's just so hard to understand that kind of love and sacrifice. But that is exactly what happened and what God wanted the Israelites to understand. Just how horrible sin is and what it cost Jesus. The message of the sanctuary is a message of love deeper than anything else you could imagine. 1 Peter 3.18 says, Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. The sinless one had to take the sinner's place, and all the way back in Eden, the idea of a substitute accepted in the sinner's place was taught as a way to salvation. We can never atone for our own sins. In many other world religions, good works are encouraged as a way to atone for your mistakes. But there aren't enough good works to change our heart the way Jesus can, and only Jesus is worthy to stand in our place in judgment. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. Good works can't deal with sin. Death is the result of sin. Without sin being dealt with, death would be the end. You would never come out of the grave. But the sanctuary's sacrificial system showed that heaven would accept a substitute in our place. Something that takes a hopeless human race and gives us hope. Let's go back to the sanctuary scene in the Bible. Let's say a sinner enters the sanctuary with a lamb to be sacrificed. What all happened in this process? The individual would enter the courtyard and would then see the sanctuary. The Bible says it had four layers. Badger skins, ram skins dyed red, goat skins bleached white, and the innermost layer was a beautiful multicolored linen tapestry. You can read more about this in Exodus chapter 26. They would lead their lamb to the altar of burnt offering, and they had to lay their hands on the head of the animal and confess their sin. Then he had to kill the animal with his own hand, and his confessed sin was transferred to the lamb. The sinner was then separated from the sin and the result of that sin. This is a tough scenario to imagine, and I'm so glad we don't have to do this anymore. It's also the best news for us sinners. Each one of us have messed up in life. We've made mistakes. Maybe it's even been a big mistake. The message of the sanctuary is that Jesus is willing to forgive you for that mistake and separate you from the responsibility of that sin. He takes the fall for you because He loves you that much. He's willing to be the lamb for your sin. We don't have to carry that guilt anymore. Jesus can give us peace despite our past because He has forgiven what we have confessed. Leviticus 5, 5 says, It shall be when he is guilty in any of these matters that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is a promise from God himself that we can count on. Back to the sanctuary. After the sacrifice was made in the courtyard, some of the blood was poured out at the base of this altar, and some was rubbed on the horns at each end of the altar's four corners. Some of the blood was also taken by the priests into the holy place in the sanctuary and placed on the four corners of the altar of incense and before the veil separating the two rooms of the sanctuary. The Ten Commandments were kept on the other side of that veil inside the Ark of the Covenant. And although the sinner had broken the law, the blood of the sacrifice had atoned for that sin. Through the blood there was a record that the sin had been forgiven. Sometimes Satan likes to remind us of all the bad things we've done in our lives and make us think that God could never love someone like us with our history. But when we have confessed our sins and experienced the grace and forgiveness of Jesus, that's not our past anymore. Jesus has taken care of all that for us and we walk forward in newness of life. Don't ever forget that Jesus can give you a fresh start. Okay. So we see that some of the blood has been transferred to the sanctuary, but what happened to the rest of the sacrifice? In some cases, the priests ate some of the meat, but most of the animal was burned on the altar. There was nothing left of the sacrifice. Hebrews 10.4 gives us more clarity when it says, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. It wasn't the actual animal that was able to forgive the sin. 
The sacrifice of the animal foreshadowed the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Jesus. And the sacrifices legitimately forgave the sin because of the eventual sacrifice of Jesus on the cross in our stead. Our sins would be transferred to Him when we confessed our sins. Like it says in John 1.29, He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Today, I am so thankful for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross so that we could experience His grace and forgiveness. What an unselfish, humble sacrifice He made because He loves you so much. Today, I want to appeal to you. If there is anything that you have in your past that you haven't taken to Jesus, I want you to take a moment and confess that sin to Jesus. I don't know what that might be. Only you could know that. But Jesus is ready and waiting to work with you on that, and He has promised to forgive whatever sin that might be. When you experience the grace and forgiveness Jesus offers you, don't ever look back. Walk forward with your head held high because Jesus has given you a fresh start and forgiven your sins. No more guilt, just assurance that you are forgiven through the sacrifice of Jesus in your place. Today, you should feel loved because of what Jesus has done for you. He loved you so much that He was willing to take your sins on Himself so you could be saved. One of the most famous verses in the Bible says, For God so loved the world. You could also say, For God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whoever believes that Jesus died for your sins and forgave your sins when you confess them will have everlasting life. That is for you and for me. The message of the sanctuary points humanity to a Savior who loves them and wants them to be with Him in heaven someday. Let's commit today to following Jesus and believing that when we confess our sins, Jesus forgives those sins and we experience the grace and newness of life that Jesus gives us. Today I'm thankful for that grace in my life and I hope that you are as well. Thanks so much for joining me in this study of the sanctuary and I look forward to seeing you next time. I'm Jamie Houghton with 832.